Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sam, I hope you're doing really well. And on this channel, I like to talk about all things film, Blu-ray, physical media collecting. So this is a video I've been itching to record for quite a while. I've just been waiting patiently. Patience is my strongest suit. For this, uh, this package to uh, get to me. And I'm talking about my uh, Blu-ray haul from the Vinegar Syndrome Black Friday sale. So I went a bit overboard on Black Friday. Um, I bought quite a lot of titles. This box is absolutely massive. Um, so yeah. So if you're not aware, Vinegar Syndrome are a boutique Blu-ray label company based in, uh, in the US. And they specialize in restoring and preserving and putting out on Blu-ray genre films with a particular focus on sort of like horror and exploitation and also sort of uh, classic erotica or basically pornography from the 70s and 80s that had like theatrical releases that's where their origins started as a as a company they sort of were releasing these porno pictures basically but in recent years they've got a lot of traction with releasing sort of horror films and exploitation films that have never seen blu-ray or the versions out there were pretty poor so a lot of the films that they put out were like 2k or 4k restorations of these bizarre deep cut films um, that most of the time anyone purchasing them are blind buying them but um, I'm a big supporter of physical media with particularly why I support it is because I love the work that the boutique blu-ray label companies do with preserving film and restoring them and just producing something that the masses can can see and just bringing a film out of obscurity and I just I just I'm fascinated by that sort of thing and uh, yeah I didn't mind um, sinking quite a big sum of money during the sale everything I bought in that box is a blind buy an informed blind buy I've been listening to a lot of podcasts and watching a lot of other youtubers who cover the vinegar syndrome label such as uh, Brian from just the discs uh, Aaron Pinn um, and also uh, Michael Keane who's fastly becoming one of my favorite youtubers he focuses on like the vinegar syndrome label and Severin and other sort of uh, things of that sort all of these I'm just going to briskly show you them um, I'll probably do some b-roll footage to um, show the the slip covers and the, the contents of the film in a little closer detail um, and if I have anything to say about the film then I will I will inform you as and when that, that comes to me but as I said most of these are blind buys and I don't know anything about them apart from being interested by what other people have said about it whose opinion I trust so first up we have uh, Olivia uh, this is a film about a killer prostitute so she witnessed this woman witnesses her mother being murdered when she was a child and then she grows up to be in a, an abused relationship an abusive relationship and then she basically is visited by her dead mother's spirit or something like that and then she is convinced to basically seduce men and murder them that's the concept of the film you son of a bitch i mean next up is uh, a film by uh, jose ramon laraz who's quite a well-known spanish filmmaker who's made um, a bunch of films that were put out by arrow um he had a box set and uh, yeah i'm really interested in his stuff and yeah rest in pieces fantastic slip cover here i mean oh my god it's just absolutely superb the spot gloss on here next up is a film from 1969 directed by robert downey senior and this i believe is one of paul thomas anderson's all-time favorite films and it's putney swope i bought this basically because it's one of paul thomas anderson's favorite films <laughs> and it was in the sale so i picked it up and i'm really interested to see uh what would make like pta's like all-time favorite films list so next up is a sort of horror film from 1981 starring john cassavetes and i think this is an odd, oddball sort of film for him to do but it's uh, the film incubus so i know this has got a lot of detractors and is uh, quite an interesting film um but i'm intrigued to see it basically because cassavetes is in it and it's maybe something very different to the rest of his sort of like filmography so so the next film is called uh in the cold of the night i was influenced by this one um as i said by michael Keane's channel and this is about i think a 
a fashion photographer who keeps having visions of murdering this woman and then basically he sort of starts investigating uh, the strange visions and um what if there's this killer who's thinking about <laughs> planning to kill that girl what if i'm somehow intercepting his thoughts this is meant to be very brian de palmery if that's not really a word or a sentence is it but this film is very much influenced and stylistically reminiscent of Brian De Palma films. That's probably a better way of phrasing it. Um, so I'm unimagining it's got a little, it's a little sleazy uh, as Brian De Palma films could be. Um, so yeah, um, in the cold of the night. Uh, next up is a Spanish yellow film by Juan Antonio Bardem, and it's The Corruption of Chris Miller. I've heard Aaron Pin, I believe, talking about this one, and I'm a huge yellow fan. I'll pick up pretty much any film that's a giallo just to, just to check it out, just to further my knowledge and um, uh, experience in watching giallo films. And uh, this is a blind spot for me. Next up is a 1982 film, uh, sort of like a alien creature feature film that looks like it has an absolutely terribly designed monster, or I'm not too sure, but it's the Night Beast. I've heard, um, the guys from Amateur Filmies, Matt and Sarah, talk about this on their channel. And uh, yeah, I think this is meant to be like a good bad time or a bad good time. I'm not sure how you want to phrase it. I don't like to describe films as so bad they're good because um, if you enjoy something, you enjoy it basically, whether it was the intent of the filmmakers or not. Next up is a film that's not actually uh, a Vinegar Syndrome release, but they also do um, partner label uh, distribution uh, so they also sell like Severin and uh, the American genre film uh, association I'm not entirely sure or what that's called again AGFA um, but they also release synapse or synapse films and I managed to pick up in the sale as well from them their 4k restoration of Dario Argento Suspiria now, this is one of my favorite films of all time and I'm desperate to see this in 4K. It is a 4K restoration from the original uncut, uncensored 35 millimeter Italian camera negative. So you can't get any better sort of original source than that. And I am very intrigued to see how this looks, particularly with the colors in this film. It's very famous for its use of colors. And I'm just gonna, I wanna see how they pop on the screen in the 4K. So really excited to delve into this one. Next up is a 1973 film uh, directed by uh, Guerdon Trueblood and it's The Candy Snatchers. So I'm led to believe that this is very reminiscent of films like The Last House on the Left in terms of how uh, the tone and how exploitive it is. And um, that's all I really know about this one. Uh, the amateur filmies again talked about this on their channel and uh, basically sold me on picking this up when the uh, the sale came around. So yeah, trying to rattle through these as quickly as possible to not make the video so long. I picked up quite a few things. Uh, next up is a 1993 film directed by Stuart Raphael and it's Tammy and the T-Rex. This stars Denise Richards and the basic concept of this one is Denise Richards uh, boyfriend gets like killed mauled to death by a lion or some animal and basically his body is stolen by a mad scientist and his brain and consciousness are transported into a robotic t-rex and then shenan shenanigans happens from there you can watch this film in its uncut glory with all the blood and gore and violence and stuff or you can watch it in a sort of cut pg-13 version where it's a lot more family friendly and all the blood and everything is cut out of it so i found that quite interesting that you could have this film on the shelf and be appropriate for adult viewers and also for sort of family or you know, younger children to watch so that's really interesting and this was the 300th release so this is spine 300 for vinegar syndrome next up is a 1985 horror film thing uh, called Spookies. Uh, this is directed by a bunch of people, Thomas Doran, Brendan Faulkner and Eugene Joseph. And I think the pull of this film is the entertainment value from the creatures and the practical special effects in the film. I've heard that the plot is nonsensical and that the acting is quite questionable in places, but the real entertainment value here, as I said, is the 
the creatures that are on screen and uh, yeah again the amateur filmies talked about this one and they said it was a highly recommended title so I thought I'd pick it up next one it's got a slip cover on it oh these slip covers are nice and um, this is uh, the spine number seven so it's a really early one so they must must have been reissued with a spine cover later on I'm not too sure but so this is the Nelson Leon or Lion film uh, the telephone book oh this spine cover is so nice this is all embossed it's lovely um this is uh like an, er an erotic type film i believe uh it follows a story of a woman who is sort of phoned up by a pervert bloke or guy basically and she starts to fall in love with the person who's given her these like dodgy phone calls um, that's all I really know about it and that it's meant to look like absolutely gorgeous the, the black and white photography is meant to be amazing and yeah so excited to delve into that one again along the realms of like art house erotic type films is a Joe Sarno film The Red Roses of Passion I heard um, some people on the Just The Discs podcast talk about this saying it's a very tastefully done sort of erotic uh, film um, and yeah um, I just bought it based on what the people on the podcast were saying about it. So, so this is a limited uh, uh, version. I'm not too sure on the spine there. It says it says limited and it's the vinegar syndrome number 182. So I'm not sure what's limited about it because it doesn't have a slip cover on it. But next up, slip cover again, uh, is a film by uh, Thomas S. Alderman and it's The Severed Arm. Oh man, I love that. You can see how glossy that is in the camera there. So this is all spot gloss and this is all embossed and it's matte finish as well. And it's just absolutely gorgeous. And the concept of this film is something that really interests me uh, from like a like an entertainment point of view. And the, the concept is a bunch of guys are like mountaineering or they're in a cave or something like that. Um, and basically there's a the cave collapses and they're basically going really really hungry and so they somehow managed to decide to cut off one of the one of the guy's arms so that they can eat but they managed not long after cutting this guy's arm off they managed to get rescued and then the rest of the film is about how someone from the group or maybe not we don't know is sort of starting to kill off all of the surviving members from this cave uh, adventure um yeah so uh sounds like a lot of fun next up is a uh, mexican horror film by ruben galindo jr who is someone i've only become aware of since watching a lot of youtubers talk about these films that have recently been released by vinegar syndrome um and the first one here is the cemetery of terror now this slip cover is absolutely amazing oh it's just picking it up but those eyes are gloss spot spot glossed so when you look at it in the right eye it looks like they're blinking or looking at you it's just so good and this design is just absolutely gorgeous uh, so yeah this came out in 1985 and the basic concept of this one is a group of uh, kids um, sort of dig up the body of a known serial killer and perform some sort of satanic ritual and then this killer is like risen from the grave and then basically starts serial killing people again um, and I've heard nothing but great things like in like the blu-ray collecting community uh, of people who've already got this one saying it's just such a great and like underrated film that not many people would have seen unless they'd uh follow vinegar syndrome so and the slip cover is absolutely gorgeous even the spine is uh is embossed so it's superb uh in a similar vein as the uh, as cemetery of terror we have another uh, ruben galindo jr film uh grave robbers uh, on the front it says Ladrons de Tumbas. Uh, pronunciation's not my strong suit. But yeah, this, again, slip cover is all embossed. It looks absolutely superb. Oh, amazing. And yeah, this is, again, about a group of kids that basically resurrect a sort of cursed um, murderer or someone who has like an axe um, attached to their chest when they're, when they're buried um on their deathbed and then these kids do some sort of ritual and then this killer is risen again so it's very similar to that one but i've heard it's it's a bit of a different film even though the concept sounds the same but mexican sort of horror films is a very it is a is a dark spot and don't think i've ever seen any so um really excited to delve into these ones next up is a film called demon wind i think this is like a possession cursed type film in which people uh, get 
possessed by the demon wind and uh, murder each other or something like that. It looks quite a lot, quite a lot of fun. And they even released this the soundtrack of this film on uh, cassette tape, which I think is a pretty cool touch. I think that sold out pretty instantly. But um, I've also heard other YouTubers and stuff talk about this one, and I thought I'd give it a go. Next up is a sexploitation film from 1973, uh, directed by Raphael Nussbaum, and it's his film Pets. So the, the front cover of this film might give away the content or the tone of the feature, um, but again, I've heard lots of people talking about this one and I thought I'd give it a punt again. And the last of the trio of Ruben Galindo Jr. films is a 1987 uh, film, Dimensiones, Dimensiones Occultus, or it's also known as don't panic in the English title. So uh, again, the slipcover is absolutely gorgeous. The eyes are spot glossed and uh, it's all embossed and it just looks awesome. I absolutely love these from just an aesthetic point of view. Um, so hopefully the films <laughs> can live up to the uh, expectation of what the packaging comes like. So this one is about um, a bunch of kids playing with a Ouija board and summoning like a demonic spirit presence thing. And I think it like, possesses people and stuff so yeah there's a lot of possession and uh, re, re summoning spirits in this Ruben Galindo Jr's filmography so far. Next up is a film by Simon Nocturne and it's the film Silent Madness. Ah uh, this is one of the few films that I did know about before I bought. It's like a, a really hard to get hold of um, slasher film from the 80s that was I think one of the first films uh, sort of horror films in 3D and in this case you actually get um, a pair of 3D glasses to watch this in 3D so you get a, the disc in here is able to play um, 3D uh, through the TV if you have a 3D play, uh, 3D TV or you can put on the glasses and uh, watch like an anaglyphic uh, 3D version of the film so that's 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 such a nice touch and uh, yeah awesome uh, all embossed again it's just absolutely amazing again this next one is a film that's been on my radar for so long and there was a lot of buzz uh, about this film getting the release from Vinegar Syndrome as many people never thought this would come to Blu-ray and this is the 1980 sort of horror slashery type film uh, Fate of Black so this is like the slasher or the killer in this film, I believe is like a cinephile and they like to dress up as various different like classic uh, horror uh, icons from like the, even like the universal horrors like the mummy or Dracula and things like that. And uh, yeah, um, I'm really excited to watch this one. So this one also came with another slip cover. So I got two slip covers. So this was absolutely amazing. So you get this version uh, I quite like the, this this design on this this uh, slip, um, and I also got this one, so I can pick and choose <laughs> spoiled for choice of slips here. <laughs> Crazy. Next up is uh, actually a Vinegar Syndrome archive release. So within the Vinegar Syndrome um, uh, label, they have a few different offshoots from their main uh, label, and the archive is meant to be uh, reminiscent of like. VHS tapes so these were sort of like the films that you'd find in VHS rental stores that uh, were typically straight to VHS and haven't seen the light of day since since those times in like the 80s and stuff so and and the one I managed to pick up which I think is out of print now unfortunately but it's the LA Wars uh, so I've heard that this is like an, a crazy over-the-top action film um, what year did this one come out Oh no, this isn't from the 80s, this is from 90s. This came out in 1993. And uh, these are like um, limited to 4,000 copies. Next up is the first release from Vinegar Syndrome on their VSU line. And there was a lot of buzz again on this one. Uh, it's a 4K uh, release of the classic 80s action fantasy film Beastmaster, directed by Don Coscarelli, who's probably most famous for uh, Phantasm. Um, this packaging is quite frankly incredible. Uh, I believe Vinegar Syndrome have patented this packaging. So it's like a um, snap, snap case and it's all embossed and gloss, glossy and oh, it's amazing. And then you get inside, you get the film on 4K with a slip cover. So you get all that packaging and then you still get the film in a slip cover. And 
yeah, it just, it's just absolutely amazing. I think it comes with a booklet as well. Yeah, it comes with an awesome book. And uh, oh, awesome, awesome stuff. And last but no means least is uh, one of the titles that I was um, most anticipating after getting the previous installment of this uh, box set. And it's the Forgotten Jally Volume 2. The first uh, box set was fantastic, even though... I'd probably only say two out of three of the films from that box set are good films. Um, it's, I, I just love Jalo films, so um, any chance to pick up uh, Jalo films that I haven't seen before, uh, I just I just got to do it. And this box set is awesome, and I love that these are like open from the top, so we have a nice cool thing there. And then this comes with three films. Uh, we have The Girl in Room Two A, The French Sex Murders and my dear killer so yeah that was um a pit stop tour of my blu-ray haul uh from the vinegar syndrome black friday sale i'm itching to watch all of those films i'm really into um sort of more lesser seen genre films and uh ex exploitation and just seeing what people can do with low budget uh films basically and uh i absolutely so far from the films i've already got from Minninga syndrome I, I love the work they do i love what they stand for and uh yeah i love to support companies like them so if you've seen any of these films <laughs> let me know what you think of them um i will do like a follow-up video um once i've got through quite a lot, a lot of these films and sort of give my thoughts and opinions on them um, but yeah, uh, if you like this video and you want to see more content like this, uh, please consider subscribing to the channel and liking the video. And yeah, so um, until next time, everyone, take care.